Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Tirso and I'm a creative director based in New York City. A different setup here because I'm visiting family in Chicago. A break from work is a nice excuse to get some content going. I've met quite a few of you through the mentoring sessions, which have been really great because you validated a lot of the content on this channel. Some of you are working on print projects, but aren't so familiar with print production. When you mentioned this to me, I was really fearing for you because there are specific requirements. And if you miss something, your project may turn out different. Not to worry, I have a checklist for you in the description below for easy reference. With that said, here is my guide to print production. There's always that one class in school that nobody ever pays attention to. For designers, I'm pretty sure that class is print production. Print is dead, everything's going digital. I feel like I've heard this since the beginning of my career and we are still printing things today. There are projects that simply can't be eliminated because we experience printed things very differently than we do in the digital space. Let's say you're throwing an event, you're probably going to need signage. Packaging, all packaging is printed. Take this book, for example. On the case, there is a ghost deboss. You can try to replicate something like this in digital, but what you're going to miss out on is tactility. When you deboss or emboss something, the idea is that you want to touch it. Weddings. Weddings are a formal occasion and a printed invite makes it feel special. I actually forgot that I did this until I started working on this video, but I actually designed and printed my sister's wedding invitations, which was my gift to them for their wedding. Side note that designing and printing the invitation was a nice gift, but the actual gift is giving the bride one less thing to do. I have the border printed with a gold foil. The difference between printing with gold foil versus a gold ink is that when shown in the light, the shade of gold changes, which gives it some character. The text was pretty simple, so I had it letter pressed. This is something that you want to hold in touch. I think it also sets the expectation of what kind of wedding your guests will be attending. I wouldn't have been able to create something like this if I didn't have an understanding, or in this case, a more advanced understanding of print production. We have to define a few things first so you actually understand what I'm talking about, so here is a vocabulary list. Preflighting in print is the process of checking your files before sending to a printer. The term comes from pilots having a preflight process before takeoff. I made a quick layout of a restaurant I went to on vacation. Meal was 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Let's start with trim, which is your page size. This page is 8 inches by 10.875 inches, so that's my trim size. Bleed are your elements that extend past your trim size. Have you ever tried to print something that goes to the edge, but instead it comes out with a border? The reason for this is that most printers don't go edge to edge. How bleed works is that the image or elements extend a little bit past the edge and then the paper is cut down to the correct size, leaving you with a full bleed design. When pages are being cut down, they do shift slightly and there comes a margin of error for that. Because of this, printers provide what is called safety. Safety is an imaginary margin on your page to keep elements from being cut off. This mostly applies to text because if it gets cut off, it can become unreadable. The best way to prevent issues with safety is to have your margins larger than the specs and keep all of your text elements within those margins. Similar to safety, we have gutter for when you have spreads. This is the imaginary margin on the inside of your page. Because of the binding, elements are pushed in quite a bit to avoid anything falling into the gutter. So those are the elements that really surround your content. Let's talk about the technical specs when it comes to text and image. Both of these live in a color space, which will be RGB or CMYK. RGB is a color space for anything digital, which stands for red, green, and blue. CMYK is the color space you need to be in for anything print, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This always brings up the question, why is black K? K stands for key color, which is black. I don't control these things, people were weird back then. For images, we have to pay attention to resolution, which is the quality of your image. Resolution is measured in DPI or dots per inch. The high res requirement for print is 300 dpi, which just means that for every inch you have 300 dots of color. 
your design must be done in InDesign in order to do this. If you're using Photoshop or Illustrator, you will not be able to pre-flight correctly for print. Some people push back that you can use another program. These are the people that don't know what they're doing. I once had a designer do her entire layout in Illustrator. It was approved by the client, but because she couldn't pre-flight properly, the printer came back with all of these errors and they wouldn't accept her file, so she had to redo the entire thing. Do yourself a favor and just do it correctly from the beginning. If you're new to InDesign, I do have a tutorial for beginners and that link is in the corner. Back to our layout, which I'm now in InDesign. I'll do this in order of the vocabulary I went through earlier. So we first check our trim size. I made the mistake of having the wrong trim size and you do have to adjust. We move on to bleed. All images that go to the edge need to extend to the bleed line. The two images that go to the edge don't actually go to bleed, so we do need to extend until we touch that bleed line. Safety, if you followed my note earlier, having all of your text within the margin, you shouldn't have any issues here. Next, the two main areas to pay attention to for print production are color space and resolution. As I mentioned earlier, CMYK is your color space for print. Again, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Let's go over how pages are actually printed. During offset printing, there are four plates that lay down a thin layer of ink for each color. Contrary to the order of CMYK, black is your key color, so that comes first followed by cyan, magenta, and yellow. I'm gonna to try to emulate how this would actually be printed. So it goes black first, then a layer of cyan, magenta, then yellow, and here we are, the output of a CMYK print. In order to pre-flight this, go to your swatches panel. If you don't see it, you can go to window, color, then swatches. Let's zoom in here real quick. We can remove any swatches that aren't being used in our layout. In order to do this, right click, choose select all unused and then click the trash can in the bottom corner. Next, I like to make sure that all the elements have a swatch assigned to it. You can click each element and just check if it pops up. I usually start with black first. The default black in InDesign is in CMYK. I did this on purpose, but this gutter credit is not in the default black, so we can just change that. The yellow is there, but the orange is not. How you add it to the panel is click on the element and then this tiny color box, just drag it down. On the right side of each swatch, the very last square indicates if a swatch is in CMYK or RGB. We need to make sure that everything is in CMYK. To change this, double click the swatch and this modal window will pop up. In the color mode dropdown, choose CMYK it's right above RGB, so you actually have to go up, not down. Click OK, and you'll see that it changed to CMYK, so continue this for the rest of the swatches. I want to talk about black real quick. Most of the time, you're going to use the default black, which the value for that is 100K. When you print, there's a thin layer of ink for each color. For this conveniently placed bubble, it overlaps the image. If you were to print this, you might see a little bit of transparency from the image itself. The reason for this is because there isn't enough ink from the black alone and the rest of the colors are layered on top. So how do we solve this? We use a two color black, which is often the addition of cyan to the 100K. The breakdown I use for two color black is 60% cyan and 100% black. There are some cases where you'll need more ink or you just want a true, true black, which there is a four color breakdown. The breakdown that I use is 60% cyan, 60% magenta, 40% yellow, and 100% black. And that should be everything for color and type. Now we can move on to images. For print, images need to be in CMYK and the resolution is 300 dpi for high res. 
go to the links panel, which is in window and then links. So here we're looking at two things. The first is that 300 DPI resolution, which is dots per inch. This used to say DPI, but at some point Adobe changed it to PPI, which is pixels per inch. Regardless, we treat it the same. The actual PPI doesn't really matter because that's just what's said in Photoshop. What you wanna look at is that the effective PPI, which needs to be 300 or above. If your image is low res, you'll have to scale it down. You can see the effective PPI go up when we do this. Keep scaling it down until you get to 300. Clearly these images are super high res, so we're fine on resolution, but we can look at how resolution is affected here. On the left, the image is at 100% at 300 dpi. In the middle, the image is at 100% at 150 dpi. And on the right, it is at 72 dpi. Although 300 dpi is ideal, it's not always possible if you don't have access to the original images. As I mentioned before in this channel, I've struggled so that you don't have to. I have definitely sent images below 300 to print and it's been fine. Like totally fine. Is 290 gonna make a difference? Probably not. I suggest not going below 250 because that's probably pushing it, unless you're printing on newsprint, which is extremely forgiving because of its naturally grainy texture. The other part that we're looking at for images is that everything is in CMYK. You can check that over here. If you have an image in RGB, you'll have to change it in Photoshop so that it's CMYK. You can do that by right-clicking on the link Let's go to edit in Photoshop. On here, we're gonna go to image, mode, and then CMYK. Save this and you can close it. Back in InDesign, everything should update accordingly and just repeat this for any of the elements that are in RGB. That is all of the pre-flight steps that you need to take. Once you've made sure everything is correct, you can now export your project. For printers, you should be exporting as a PDF, specifically a PDF X1A. You can export by pressing Command E or going to File Export. Here we want to label our PDF and check that the format is PDF print. Click Save. At the top, click the drop down for Adobe PDF preset, and we want PDF X1A 2001. If you go down, you can choose your page range here, and then exporting as pages is totally fine. Next, we go to Marks and Bleeds on the left hand side. Some designers like to use all printer marks, I only use crops and bleed marks, so Let's make sure these are checked. We also have to change the offset over here to 0.125 inches. The reason for this offset is because when you add crop marks, they actually end up in your bleed area. The offset moves them out so that way there's no possibility of them being seen. We also wanna make sure use document bleed settings is checked, which uses the bleed size you originally set when you created the document. This is often going to be 0.125 inches, which matches our offset. For the other tabs, you don't really need to do anything here. Those are changed when you choose from the drop down above. We can click export and our PDF is done. Here is our final PDF. Contrary to the preview we had in InDesign, you can now see the crop marks and then the bleed marks. Printers use these marks to know where to trim. To my knowledge, they are also used for aligning your page correctly. My final note here is that printers will let you know if there's anything wrong with your PDF. If you follow the steps we went through exactly, this should reduce the amount of back and forth. Thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about you for a second. What did you learn from the video? Are there things you want me to explain further? And what kind of print projects are you working on? Leave me a comment below, keep on creating, and I'll see you in the next video.